What's up dudes and dudettes, I'm Lex from What The Craft, also known as Smarmy Clothes, and today's tutorial is this little felt pin cushion that looks like a hamburger. Those are not seeds, they are pins. It has emery powder in the top to keep your pins sharp, and I have opted to use a wool blend felt. I think it has a nicer feel and look than acrylic felt, but it's cheaper than 100% wool. There is a free pattern for this available on my website, so be sure to go grab that before you get started. And one last thing I want to note is that, as you can see, I've attached a little piece of elastic here because I was planning on wearing this on my wrist. The problem is the emery powder makes it really heavy and it kind of wobbles and eventually just dangles under there. It's not very useful as a wristband. So my suggestion would be if you want a wristband pin cushion, leave the emery powder out and save the emery powder for a desktop pin cushion, which is what I end up using this for. Let's get started. Alrighty, here's our material list. One sheet of felt in each of the following colors. Tan, brown, yellow, red, white, and green. A small scrap of fusible interfacing, approximately two inches by three inches. A scrap of woven fabric, approximately four inches by eight inches. A small handful of polyfill or alternate stuffing material. Peltex, which is a very thick fabric stabilizer that you should be able to find at most fabric stores and quilting shops. That being said, if you don't want to hunt it down just for one dinky little pin cushion, cardboard or cardstock will suffice. I'm mostly using this because I already had some on hand. Needle and thread, and optional decorative elastic for the wristband version of the pin cushion in a width of half an inch or five eighths of an inch. You can use other widths, but you may need to adjust the size of the wristband loop on the pattern to accommodate the different width. Optional emery sand if you're making a tabletop sharpening pincushion. All right, let's get started. Step one, I'm going to start by assembling the little pillow that will be filled with emery sand or polyfill. These are my two pillow pieces made from woven fabric. Place the pillow circles right side together and sew using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to leave a gap of approximately one inch for stuffing slash filling. Turn the pillow right sides out using some sort of pointy instrument like a chopstick. Just give it the old jabberuski. Once we have our pillows turned out, it's time to start stuffing. If you're using polyfill, then your task will be much easier. Just start stuffing little bits of poly fluff in there until you have a nice little pillow. If you're using emery sand like me, I think the easiest way to get the sand into the pillow is to fashion a makeshift funnel from a scrap piece of paper. You can use a real funnel, of course, just make sure to wash it before you use it for anything else. Insert the funnel into the gap left in the seam of the pillow and gently pour or spoon the emery sand inside. Try not to make a catastrophic mess doing this. Easier said than done, right? If you're using emery sand, the trick is to fill the pillow as full as possible while also leaving enough seam allowance at the top to sew it shut. For the polyfill pillows, stuff until it's fairly firm. You want a nice, dense support for the pins. And then when you're finished, pin it closed. Sew the gap closed. Check out my other videos for a more in-depth tutorial on the ladder stitch. Really, you can use whatever hideous stitching you want to sew this shut. It will be nestled deep within the pincushion, so no one will ever see it. Just make sure that if you're using emery powder, you get your stitches fairly tight so that none of the sand leaks out. Finally, it's time to assemble our top bun. You will need your top bun felt piece, one circle of Peltex or the cardboard or cardstock, a small handful of polyfill, and the pillow. Based around the top edge of the top bun piece, approximately one quarter of an inch from the edge. This is just a quick running stitch that we'll use to cinch the top bun into a pillow shape. It does not need to be pretty. 
So get some junk thread knotted up at the end and get to work. Here you can see how cinching that running stitch pulls the felt into a bowl shape. Place the small handful of polyfill in the center of the top bun, followed by the pillow, and finally the Peltex or cardboard disc. Test the shape of the bun by cinching the stitching around the fillings. You might need to adjust the amount of polyfill to get the right shape, especially if you're using the polyfill pillow and not the emery sand. It might be that you don't need any extra polyfill at all. Once you've got the shape how you want, cinch the stitching and tie off the end of the basting thread to hold the top bun shape. I like to leave a few inches on the original thread tail so that I can use it to tie this end off easier once I've got everything in a tight little bun shape. If you flip the top bun so it's right side up, you ideally shouldn't be able to see the stitching or the raw edges of the felt. Just a nice clean bun. That's how you know you've got the right amount of filling and stitching. Bottom bun time. Here we've got the bottom bun felt piece, two discs of Peltex or cardboard slash cardstock, a small piece of scrap interfacing, and the wristband loop felt piece if you want to go the optional route of making the pin cushion that you can wear on your wrist. So these next few steps are optional. If your scrap of interfacing is fusible, fuse it to the wrong side of the bottom bun, right in the center. If it is not fusible, pin it in place. Pin the wristband loop to the right side of the bottom bun. Top stitch the wristband loop along the edges, making sure the opening will be wide enough to fit your wristband elastic through. I have used two rows of stitching to make sure the loop is extra secure. Ideally, it should be surrounded by interfacing on the opposite side so that when you stitch it in place, the stitching goes through the interfacing as well, which will reinforce everything. Now we will baste around the edge of the bottom bun, just like we did with the top bun. Place one Peltex or cardboard disc on the wrong side of the bottom bun, followed by a small amount of polyfill, followed by the other Peltex disc, a Peltex and polyfill sandwich, if you will. Cinch the basting stitches tightly around them and then tie the basting thread off. If we do a test fitting of the two buns, you can kind of see how they'll go together in the end with the rest of the layers filling in the gaps and covering any raw edges. Patty party time. This is the patty, folded in half, right sides together, and stitched with a quarter inch seam allowance. Use your fingers to press the seam open. Fold the patty loop in half on itself, wrong sides together. Pin and top stitch along the raw edges. Fold the loop in half again and hand stitch in place. It's okay if the stitching twists around a little on you while you sew. It's easy to readjust once the stitching is finished. At the end, we'll have what looks like an anemic chocolate donut, or maybe a very overcooked onion ring. Tie off your stitching and twist the stitches to the inside of the donut. Let us move on to the lettuce. Get it? Just a little vegetable humor to lighten things up. Baste around the inner lettuce circle, approximately one quarter of an inch from the edge. You can probably guess what comes next. That's right, pull the stitches tight and then tie off the thread to keep the gathering in place. Tomato time. Pin the two tomato slices right sides together. Sew around the edge of the tomato pieces using a quarter inch seam allowance and being sure to leave a gap in the stitching for turning. Trim any excess seam allowance away. Turn the tomato right side out. Finally, let's prep the onion. Fold the onion in half and pin in place. Top stitch along the raw edge. That's it, it's time to assemble our burger. Fire up the hot glue gun and glue the patty to the bottom bun. Now to avoid oozing glue everywhere, Go slowly. I start with a single dab of glue to stick the two pieces together in one spot first. I hold the pieces until the glue sets, and then I move on to the next spot. Try to keep the glue toward the inside edge of the patty to keep it from showing on the outside. Next, we will place the slice of cheese. Again, if you situate the glue toward the inside of the patty, it shouldn't show on the outside. Once the cheese is in place, you can use small dabs of glue on the underside of the cheese corners to hold them down, which gives a meltier look. That's a word, right? Meltier. It's not like I'm a writer for a living or anything. Set the bottom bun and company to the side and ready the rest of the ingredients. Position the tomato on the top bun so that the small gap we left for turning it right side out will be sandwiched in the middle and thus not visible when we're finished. Glue in place. Now add a small dab of glue to one end of the onion and place it on the top bun. Once the glue is set, 
Add another dab of glue to the other end of the onion and pull it to the center of the bun to give the appearance of it being a rounded slice of onion. Add a generous amount of glue to the center of the lettuce and position that over the tomato and the onion. Once the glue has cooled, look for any gaps where you can see the top bun edges or basting stitches. Use small dabs of glue to secure the lettuce over these spots. Now it's time for the final assembly. More glue goes on the lettuce and then the two bun halves become one. Make sure the layers are making good contact so that everything is stuck together really good. Ah, if you've got little spider webs from the glue, take a minute and get rid of them. Give things a little tug here and there, make sure it's all glued together nice and secure. Lastly, we'll take it for a test drive and poke in a few pins. White glass head pins look like sesame seeds. If you want to add the wristband, now is the time to turn the whole thing over and string your elastic through. I like fold over elastic because you can just tie the ends off after fitting it to your wrist. Great Caesar's ghost, we're done! Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss my next tutorial. Leave a comment below and let me know how your project turned out. And be sure to visit whatthecraft.com for more crafty tips, tutorials, and kick-ass sewing patterns.